Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about impedance matching and balance by looking at the Guanella transformer. Initially, the device is a circuit to match the balanced high impedance high frequency output of a vacuum tube amplifier to a low impedance transmission line. This type of circuit has quite a wide variety of applications. So if you're curious about that and much more, then keep watching. So to start things off, a Guanilla transformer is a group of current balance interconnected in parallel and series to allow for various impedance ratios. One of the most common and simple implementations is the 1 to 4 impedance transformer. And as long as all of the inductors or well transmission lines that are part of the structure have the same electrical length, it becomes a very wide band structure as it is part of the equal delay transformer category. Now, this looks suspiciously similar to the structure that I presented last time as the improved Rotroff transformer. Is it different though? Let's now look a bit deeper into how this thing works. If we start with the basic current balon, the main principle behind this thing is that if current is pushed through one line, it will also force an equal and opposing current on the other line through magnetic coupling. So in this way, regardless of what is connected on the balance side, the two branches of the transformer will still see equal currents. Now, if we also factor in the law of energy conservation and consider the transformer to be ideal and lossless, whatever voltage is present on one side will also be mirrored on the other side. So keeping these properties in mind, we can now analyze any of the Guanella transformers. So if we start off by looking at the basic 1 to 4 transformer and apply a certain voltage and current to one side, we can also determine an impedance from this, say Z1. Now to see what's on the other side, first we can look at the voltage. So each transformer will mirror the left side. So there will be U1 on the two transformers. Together it will be twice the input voltage. And while a similar analysis can be done for the current, so the input current is divided into two equal halves, which are then seen on the other side. So the second side will see twice the input voltage and half the input current. Putting everything together, we can now determine the second side impedance, which will be twice the input voltage divided by half the input current, or in other words, four times the input impedance. So the complete structure is a one to four impedance transformer. And while you can use this sort of basic voltage current and energy conservation analysis on any transformer of this type to be able to work out the exact impedance ratio. Now, keep in mind, so far I'm calling this an impedance transformer, not necessarily a balon. So next, let's look into more of its properties in the circuit simulator. So first off, I made a set of circuits that uses the basic Guanella transformer once as a 1 to 4 impedance balon going from 50 ohms to 200 and the second time it's a 4 to 1 balon going from 200 ohms down to 50. The difference being which side is balanced and which is unbalanced. We can confirm the circuit's operation first of all by looking at the signal present on the output of the signal source. So in both cases we can notice the minus 6 decibel point with zero degrees of phase shift, indicating that the load is equal to the source impedance and is resistive. The second thing that we can look at is the amplitude of the signal on the two branches. So above a certain frequency, both branches see the same signal, but with a 180 degrees of phase shift. So both circuits are producing differential signals. Now, one interesting observation is that this sort of circuit is not necessarily a balon. So I prepared two more circuits, one in which it's connected as a un un, a unbalanced to unbalanced transformer, and one in which I'm using a differential signal source driving a balanced load. So in the first case, if we look at the signal on the output of the signal source, again we get our minus six decibel point with the zero degrees of phase shift, 
indicating that the impedances are matched, and well, the signal on the load side is supposed to be double in amplitude to the signal on the signal source side, so with 6 decibels more, and we clearly are getting this. So this sort of use case is replicating the equal delay implementation of the Rotroff transformer. Now, with our second circuit, which we might be able to call a bell bell, since it's balanced to balanced, I used two signal sources that have a 180 degrees phase shift, one in reference to the other, so I added in this phase shift into the small signal definition, and while for the amplitude, I used 0.5 on both of them, so together they give an amplitude of 1. And while the 200 ohms of signal source impedance, I divided it into two halves of 100. Here we look at the input signal, Again, we clearly see our minus 6 decibel point with the 0 degrees of phase shift, so this signal source is matched to the rest of the circuit, and while well, the output has a signal amplitude 6 decibels lower, so it's half the input amplitude, giving us the expected result. So the Guanella transformer is not just a Balen, but it can be used for multiple purposes. Next, let's look at the bandwidth of such a construction. I was unable to find an exact formula to determine this, but regardless, we get to look at some simulations. So first off, if we look at the input side of a 1 to 1 impedance balen and compare it to the 1 to 4, 1 to 9, and finally the 1 to 16, we can see that if we keep the individual transformer inductances the same, so I used 100 microhenries in all cases, the larger the transformation ratio, the more limited the low frequency bandwidth is. So the corner frequency is slowly moving upwards. Now, one obvious solution is to use larger inductance values. So if we compare the 1 to 4 balen with 100 microhenry inductors to a 1 to 4 balen with 200 microhenry inductors, the larger values are giving us a better result. Now, another implementation that I've seen was to add a pre-balancing balen. So to have one extra transformer, that just gives a one-to-one -one impedance transformation. And to some extent, this might help. So it does make the flat response region slightly bigger. So if we just zoom in, it looks a bit better, but the overall performance is not all that great. Finally, another option, especially with large impedance transformation ratios, is to split the transformer into bits. So for example, the 1 to 16 impedance transformer can be built as two 1 to 4 transformers in series, the total impedance ratio being the same. But if we look at the response and we compare the two, we will see that the bandwidth isn't. So even though I was using the exact same components, 100 microhenry, transformers in both cases, having the two sets of structures in series did give a better low frequency bandwidth. So in general, if you want to extend the low frequency bandwidth of any transformer, you will need to provide more coupled inductance. But if you start focusing on the other extreme, the high frequency bandwidth, then the issue becomes that the transformer needs to be treated like a transmission line. So let's continue with that. Looking at our structure as a set of transmission lines, the first important observation to make is that the signal going from one side to the other always goes through all of the lines. In other words, if the length is exactly the same, then the propagation delay will also be the same. So you should have no phase shift in between the various signals that cross the transformer. This is why the Guanella transformer is part of the equal delay transformer category. The other important aspect to focus on when talking about transmission lines is impedance matching. This is important to prevent reflections and to have an ideal lossless transmission of signals. So the impedance seen on the left side is the two transmission lines in parallel and the impedance seen from the other side is the two transmission lines in series. And well, in this particular case, the structure is supposed to work like a 1 to 4 impedance transformer, and we can consider that both of our transmission lines have the same characteristic impedance. From all of these, we can work out the exact impedance value that we need. In this particular case, 
it is twice the lower impedance value. But a more general expression is the square root of the product of the input and output impedance. This second expression will be valid for other impedance ratios as well. So, to get the best out of this type of transformer, especially at high frequency, we need to first off strictly control the propagation delay in the multiple sections, they all need to be the same, and we need to strictly control the characteristic impedance, which is determined based on the exact interfaced impedances. To observe the behavior of the transmission line implementation, I created a set of circuits that mimic our previous ones, just that they were implemented with transmission lines. And in all cases, the characteristic impedance that I've used was the square root of the product of the input and output impedance. So in all cases, the signal source is 50 ohms, and the lines are 50 ohms for the 1 to 1 Balen, 100 ohms for the 1 to 4, 150 for the 1 to 9, and finally 200 for the 1 to 16. And well, if we run the circuits, and we look at the signal on the input side, in all cases, we get a more or less flat response at minus 6 dBs, without any sort of low frequency corner because of the ideal behavior of the transmission lines. Now, we are getting this oscillation appearing, which is extremely small, but this is happening because the simulation was giving me errors because of the floating lines, so I had to add in a bunch of these 1 mega ohm resistors. But regardless, in all cases, we are getting a good matching with the calculated transmission line impedances. Now, one more circuit that I wanted to highlight is the two stage 1 to 16 impedance transformer. So, this will work just fine with transmission lines, similar to the transformer implementation. But the thing to keep in mind here is that since we are performing two impedance transformations, the transmission line impedances will end up being different. So, in the first transformation, we are going from 50 ohms to 200 through a 100 ohm impedance transmission line. And in the second stage, we are going from 200 to 800 through a 400 ohm impedance line. So we can quickly verify this thing, just to confirm everything is okay. On the input side, we are seeing the flat minus 6 dB point, so the circuit is working. But is this easier than just using four pieces of the same type of transmission line? Well, that will be practical use case dependent. Now, to try out this sort of transformer, I created a basic 1 to 4 impedance implementation to transform a 100 ohm balance load into 25 ohms using 50 ohm transmission line cables wound around ferrite cores. And to measure this, I'm using a light VNA used in USB mode, so to make the measurements through the computer. Now, when setting up this experiment, there is one very important thing to consider. How exactly do you connect the cables? So, when talking about transmission lines, the two practical basic representatives are the twisted pair and the coax cable. The twisted pair is a balanced structure and the coax is an unbalanced structure. So, the question is, if you build the 1 to 4 Balen, does it matter which type of line you use and how you actually connect it? Now, in practice, if you're building the structure from a balanced line or a twisted pair, there is only one way to construct it. But if we now consider the unbalanced line, well, there are three main ways in which you can do things. So, on the low impedance side, you can interconnect the shields to one line and the inner conductor to the other line, and then on the other side, you can put one inner conductor in series with the other line's shield, or on the left side, you can mix up the inner conductor from one line with the shield from the other line on the low impedance side. And then on the high impedance side, interconnect either the shields or the inner conductors. Now, in all fairness, there would be a fourth way in case you consider the low impedance side to be unbalanced, then you can connect either the shield or the inner conductor to ground but you will probably use the shield as a ground, so then I didn't really draw the last option. So the main difference between all of these would be just how balanced or unbalanced each end is. Depending on your specific application, one or another may be best. 
Now, using the same two pieces of coax cable, wound around the same two ferrite cores, I made multiple setups. So I interconnected them in the three main variants that we've previously discussed, and then proceeded to measure them. So in all three cases, the left side was the unbalanced side going to the measurement equipment, and on the right side, I always had the balanced 100 ohm resistor. So I measured the impedance from the VNA side, and here we expect the impedance transformation to yield 25 ohms. And well, if we look at the various results, so I plotted out the three setups in three colors and overlapped all of them. Well, the results do show variation, but one thing to observe is just how flat the overall result is. I mean, this is two ohms per division, and it's not perfectly flat at 25 ohms, but even the worst impedance value that I got was only 36 ohms, and I did check up to 500 megahertz. So regardless of connection method, they all gave pretty decent results. But of course, you could make the argument that one or the other is slightly better. At least on the high frequency side. On the low frequency side, they all gave more or less the same result. So we did see the inductance limitation below about 1 MHz, after which we got the very nice flat region. So what really is the difference between the Rutchoff and the Guanella transformer? Well, for low frequency applications, there is a clear difference. The basic 1 to 4 Rutchoff transformer can be built with one single transformer, whereas the basic 1 to 4 Guanella transformer always needs two. And for high frequency applications, the equal delay variant of the Rutchoff design is mostly the same as the basic Guanella transformer. The difference here being that if you want to improve the low frequency range, the Rushoff analysis says that you only need one magnetic core, whereas the Guanella analysis says that you will need two cores. But at least in my experiments, the two core version did work better, since it's a far more symmetrical structure. The delays here are better matched. Now, another thing to consider is that one was proposed as a un un whereas the other was proposed as a Balen. But both use cases can be built with the same Guanella version. Now, maybe I'm missing something in the background history, but in the end, regardless of the name, the important bit is understanding the operating principle and while well, using them in a practical design. And with that said, hope you got some useful information out of this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, Make sure to subscribe to be updated to all videos and see you next time. Bye bye.